Yeah, look, for me, basketball was the family sport. Uh, as I mentioned, dad umpired for over 60 years. My brother refereed. My brother, sister and I played. My mum played. My mum was on the door, you know, of stadiums when dad and I and my brother Gavin were refereeing. You know, it was just the family sport. And I started playing when I was six and a half. And I had uh, Helen Butler as my coach. And her husband, Dick Butler, was at one stage, I think, the CEO of Basketball Australia. Um, so, you know, yeah, it was, it was just a, a natural progression. I was always at a basketball stadium. I figured if I was going to be at a basketball stadium, I might as well be doing something rather than just running around causing, causing trouble or getting into trouble. So, you know, started umpiring. And, yeah, I've, I've just loved basketball. Basketball is a passion. Always have loved it. Um, that's why I'm fortunate enough to be working in basketball now with Basel South Australia. And, you know, I, I look forward to just being involved for as long as I can. Uh, as I said before, I'm a self-proclaimed basketball tragic. So uh, I've got two older brothers. They started playing. Um, I started trying to play when I was eight um, and stopped playing. I'm going to give away how old I am. No, I got got invited to play Myths and Legends Men, over 35s or whatever the rubbish was called. Um, so I played on and off, but I, I mainly didn't. I stopped playing because I didn't want to get injured. Um, but yeah, played all the way through juniors, played a little bit of junior rep, um, trained with the senior team for Big V, but it was called something else back in the day. And then decided, yeah, I'm not good at this. I was probably going to not even be a bench warmer. I was probably going to be the team mascot or the court announcer. <laughs> um, and funnily enough, I ended up doing the court announcing for the Big V women's team. And I turned around and go, hey, you know, why can't I ref this? And that's how I got involved in refereeing. Um, I'm lucky as well. I work in basketball. So um, I've done the netball theory exam for umpiring netball. So I can technically umpire a netball, even though we don't like that sport very much. Um, and I was going to take up doing AFL umpiring, but then similar to the reason why I stopped playing AFL when I was eight, I hate the cult. So I did not, I don't fancy <laughs> walking around, running around a football ground in the freezing cold. Um, I do go watch my nephews play footy, um, but that's as bad as far as it goes. But similar to Phil, working basketball and just, yeah, love the game. Um, uh, as a junior, I played every sport. Any sport that was on offer, I played it. I played netball, basketball, tennis, softball, athletics. I loved doing all of them and I was shocking because I think I sent my parents crazy with uh, taxi driving me everywhere. Um, I fell into basketball um, and I just met fabulous friends of which I'm still friends with today and we started in under 12s. So um, I'm still good friends with them now. Refereeing came because I was sort of refereeing and playing at the same sort of level uh, and I got a knee injury. So refereeing took over and let's face it, basketball, I was never going to be a great player either. I, I was probably in the bench warming you know, water boy kind of era. So, um, but I had a great time. I loved, I loved playing with my, with my friends. We had great teams, but um, refereeing just uh, took off and it sort of got to a stage and Jackie, you might find that you, you just get to a stage where you can't referee and play at the same sort of level. At some point you do have to make a decision of which you're going to pursue. Um, and so that's what happens for me. Yeah, I think mine was similar to Phil. Um, parents running basketball at Gold Coast. You, you're there where I'm one of five kids. Um, finish school, you go to basketball. Your weekends are at basketball and got drawn into the refereeing side. Um, my best mate and I to earn some money um, from one of the refs I, I still get to ref with, Tommy Peasley. Uh, he got me into it in Sandy and that's how the junior side of it started. Um, like I said before, I stopped when I um, was attempting to to be a player. I moved out of home 15 up to Townsville to try to pursue that with the, the pathway being available there through the state league and uh, them having a national league team. I think 
in Queensland, we don't have that luxury of having a lot of teams. Um, I decided when I moved there and I started refing just to get some money because I was living out of home, um, that I was that player on the court, even just at A grade level, that knew everything and wanted to argue everything. So I kind of had to make that decision of, am I going to be one of those players that the referee hates or will I just stop refing and just pick up, just try to actually make that playing a career, uh, which I tried. I clearly didn't go overly well. I get more minutes as a WNBL ref than I was ever close to getting as a player. Um, so, <laughs> uh, that injury was kind of a blessing in disguise. I dislocated my shoulder. Um, my first few minutes on QBL game that season, it wasn't the first game of the season, a few games in, got on, dislocated my shoulder, and I was like, well, that's probably a summary of my playing capability. So, yeah, switched over to refing. Um, and I kind of haven't looked back. It's like I said, it's that passion has been reignited. The back few years of playing, it, it was kind of a drag. I didn't like it. Probably not getting minutes because you're not at that level doesn't help. Um, so mentally, it was a nice refresher to then go into refereeing and finding a whole different side of the game that you didn't really quite understand or have enough knowledge in. So, And then now you, you build the friendships and um, I get to talk a lot of um, trash with my sister Cassie, who coaches in the State League. Um, in Queensland I don't ever get to ref her which is kind of a shame because I think that would be a nice battle um, but yeah um, it's always fun and now that kind of has been against our relationship um, she'll call me after a game and be like this happened and I got text for this and then I'll be like hold on I'll look on huddle get the video off and I'm like yeah you deserve that and she's like no I didn't lose it I'm, like, I'm just kidding like relax <laughs> so yeah that's uh, basketball's just always been it that's a family sport and it probably will be. If I, if I have kids, I hope that it's with them um, when they try other sports. But I hope that that basketball is kind of that passion within them as well. Well, I feel like the old man out just slightly, but that's okay. <laughs> we didn't come well, from any basketball. Yeah, my, like I said, my mum was in Nepal and my, my brothers played footy. So I played cricket for a little while, but... Yeah, I think basketball just, I don't know, it, it just drags you in and then you just stay in it for life. Mm. My dad tried to get me into AFL and I think I was kicking the dirt down the other end of the field because I didn't know what I was doing. He's proud now I'm now playing AFL again. Um, but same as you, Jay, so I don't ever want to umpire that. Um, I feel like there's a lot more physicality um, and some sneaky off-ball stuff. So I'll stick no, with refing. It's just the uh, freezing cold weather here in Melbourne. Like, I don't fancy running around in a pair of shorts in two degree weather. Sorry. Um, well, I have. I guess the phenomenal experience I had was going to Sydney Olympics. Um, so not only did we have the pre-game where we had the dream team and the Australian and the whole refereeing of that, which was a phenomenal experience, but um, then we went on and went to the Sydney Olympics. And I think we didn't, although we didn't march as officials, uh, we were in the stands and just being part of the atmosphere of, uh, of everything that was around you. It was you just you just absorbed it and ate it. It was phenomenal. I just remember sitting there going, oh, "I can't believe I'm here." It was so exciting. Um, and then. Um, just me, and it was a village, so you actually would go around, you'd actually watch all these other sports, you'd see all these other athletes, uh, and it's just being part of something that is so much bigger than you and uh, where you might be living here in the world. There's these the amazing people, and uh, you were surrounded by these phenomenal athletes. Uh, we managed to get into the stadium and watch, you know, Kathy Freeman you know, uh, win her 200 metres. It was like we were jumping in tears. Like we're official, we're impartial, but oh my God, we were jumping and cheering and it was, it was just amazing. We we're there for the walker when she got, you know, disqualified, just, you know, as she's about to come through the race and it was like your heart felt. So um, being part of that uh, was absolutely um, phenomenal. Being part of the Olympic Games is, uh, yeah, just, just incredible. Um, I also had an amazing experience in Germany. I got to referee the um, gold medal game uh, for the uh, women's championships. Got a little controversial. It was Russia versus United States. And I had like one of the final calls of the game, uh, a charging call. 
Now, to this day, the Australian team who are sitting up in the stands, 50% said yes, 50% said no. What do you do? So you made the call. So, but it was, uh, it was still an amazing experience of being part of a world championship where they actually, you are living in different uh, cities within the country and then you keep coming together with different people. And um, pheno phenomenal experience. Probably uh, there was, uh, I got two from a WBL experience. One of them, and both Joe happen to be TV games, as 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 you do. Um, and um, one of them was where I was at the old Bulleen Stadium, Bulleen Veneto Club, when ABC was televising. And I uh, didn't realise that there was a cameraman beside me as I turned around and called a charge and proceeded to punch him instead of the air. So that sort of didn't go down too well. Mm -hmm. um, or there was last year's game, which was again on TV, and it was at um, State Basketball Centre, to which we had to throw the jump ball up three times because every time I threw it up, the girls wouldn't hit the ball, and it just kept hitting the floor. So it's probably one of the biggest fears that we have as referees is throwing the ball up and it not going up straight and all this. But yeah three times in order for them to actually tap the ball and get the game started. So it was probably a bit embarrassing, but we all had a good old laugh about it. Pardon? They were a bit wonky, like from the TV angle. They looked yeah, most wonky. likely were a bit wonky. Well, there was a, <laughs> and the, the other one where I threw it up, I, I had a game and um, Rebecca Allen was jumping in the jump ball. And as I've gone to throw it up, Daniel Batty decided to yell out, Jay, so I sort of like, try to pull the ball back, but it sort of went this way and that way. And yeah, so they're probably the clean stories that I can tell. Have you ever been bagged on TV about ironing your referee shirt? Um, <laughs> oh, actually, that reminds me of another story, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was, we used to get our shirts in the change room in their plastic packets before the first game. That was how organized things used to be. And uh, Clinton Gribus, who was a, a very good commentator for the ABC, um, he's no longer with us. But, uh, yeah, he was ribbing me all game about the creases in my, in my referee shirt. And Rachel Spawn was, was commentating with him and she stuck up for me <laughs> and said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm positive that they only just got their shirts. Anyway, it comes up to next week's game, which is also a TV game. And I'm just about to throw the ball up and, and you hear on the national telecast that, and the good news tonight is Phil Haynes has ironed his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm about to throw the ball up. So very, very funny. I don't know how funny mine are compared to all those. I mean, the brain's not functioning as normal today. Um, but I think my story to share is probably my experience in the States. Um, after the tryouts, I um, teed up to stay in Florida for a week after to go to what should have been a pro tournament. Um, but a nice hurricane was coming and cancelled it all. So that was nice and fun. We're lucky we got back to Australia. <laughs> um, but I still got the chance to go. Uh, we're obviously in Orlando, uh, my partner and I. And so we drove up, um, met one of the scouts. And then he had invited Eric Lewis to come out to lunch for when we were catching up during the week, which was pretty cool. Uh, Eric worked game one of the, uh, was game five of the NBA final series um, between Raptors and Warriors. Um, so I'm there trying to be normal in front of this NBA scout as well as a referee, trying to be like, yep, I'm, I know I'm a bit younger, like I'm mature, I can be patient, da da da. Trying to like have a normal lunch conversation, also just slightly terrified. Uh, and then he's like, oh yeah, by the way, Eric's coming, and I was like, oh my god, it's just a whole nother level of fangirl um growing up and um being a basketballer myself you meet like I used to meet um Rach McCulley um Susie and all that as a young player myself um and fangirl over them and now you experience this for a ref and then you go it's when you're a little bit of a ref nerd and you're really excited and nervous <laughs> a high caliber referee uh, but then I was lucky enough that Sunday to the pro tournament was cancelled and he was meant to run it. Um, but he came out to his local gym in Daytona Beach uh, and jumped on the court with me. And I'd already ref one of the games with some two other um, prospects for the G League stuff. Um, and I just remember looking at JB, who was the ref scout, and he just looked at me and he's like, Jackie, 
he's just another person. He must have just seen the look on my face being like, Eric Lewis is about to jump on the court with me. I don't, I, I know this is just local men's stuff, but this, so I'd never imagined this. So that was probably my cool story. Um, but yeah, going from a player who fangirled over players um, to then a ref who's now fangirling over refs is just another. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be impressed with that though, Jackie. They'd love that idea that you're a fan ref girl. Yeah. <laughs> And that's probably it. That's that time that I remember the first state league game I did. I did with Eddie Crouch, so the first VBA state league game, and it, he did the old what we do now to all the rookies. Here's the ball, go meet some players, and it was at MSAC, which was the replacement for Albert Park. And here I am walking out, and he's Andrew Gaze, Leonard Copeland, Warwick Giddy, and I'm just like going, yeah, I just watch you dudes on TV. TV and, um, and oh, they were great. They're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm just a uh, little oh, bit. And it's almost, you know, you, you, you go into some games and even in WNBL, you sit there and go, oh, I used to be like watching you guys on TV, but now I'm actually on the court with you. Or, you know, you experience the, the coaches of the Tom Mars and, you know, Guy Malloy and that. And you're like, I used to see you on TV, but now I'm actually standing beside you talking to you. It's, it's a, mm. it's a big trip. Um, I, that way, as referees, we've got the best seat in the house half the time.